It's been over 10 years since the Sarah Jane adventures came to an abrupt end on CBBC after the passing of Elizabeth Sladen due to cancer, who had played Sarah Jane Smith for several decades, both on TV and in adaptations for Big Finish as well, and was basically uh, almost like a mainstay within the world of Doctor Who for a long time. Uh, however, even though the song is over, the story continues, as we've had many returning characters from uh, the Sarah Jane Adventures make appearances in the expanded media. For example, the Farewell Sarah Jane Smith story that was done under lockdown. We've seen Anjali Mahindra return multiple times as Rani Chandra. But now we have what is essentially a full-blown sequel series to the Sarah Jane Adventures in Big Finish Productions for Rani Takes on the World, Beyond Bannerman Road. Now, Rani Takes on the World is a a podcast series that renowned journalist Rani Chandra has started where apparently over the past few years since the passing of Elizabeth Sladen or since the passing of Sarah Jane Smith in this in this uh, in the Hooniverse um, she's managed to topple governments, do massive exposés on cr on um, on criminals and on the elite and things like that. And now, after the funeral of Sarah Jane, she has returned back home to London, and she's got a few friends there. She's got a nice support network. She's got a couple of friends. Uh, one of these friends is Samira, who is played by Raghad Char here. Uh, but also, we have a reunion with Clyde Langer, with Daniel Anthony reprising his role for I think the first time since the. The broadcast of the Sarah Jane Adventures. Also, we have our queen, our icon, Mina Anwa, as Jita Chandra, who is also appearing in this box set. However, things have changed since the Sarah Jane Adventures was broadcast. Both Rani and Clyde are now 30, and Clyde has met the love of his life called Phoenix, played by Tegan Byrne, and Phoenix is also pregnant Clyde is going to become a dad and we find out all of this information and everything about how they met in a chance meeting in a bar one night in the first installment of Beyond Bannerman Road here today by Joseph Lidster let's play a clip from here today cheers assuming you don't have beer then Daisy Road's USP Ealing's first booze-free bar. The world is broken. It's got to be the trickster. <laughs> Never mind that. You two, what's happening? What's going on? Who are you? Well, we met in LA. Clyde, shush, Phoenix, tell us everything. Well, we met in LA. I was working in a bar. He was meeting some Hollywood types. They were unpleasant towards me. Ugh. And Clyde, he walked out of the meeting turned his back on some big movie deal because of how they talked to me. It wasn't that big a deal. I can do better. Clyde Lander, you are all right. <laughs> One thing led to another, and to another, and to another, and here we are, expecting. I'm going to be a dad. It's amazing. <laughs> I've built a cot. Yes, you have, and it's a wonderful cot. It sparkles. But I'm wondering, what's your excuse going to be? My what now? I love you with all my heart. But you are dying to get Ronnie alone so you can talk about the good old days. Oh, you get it as well, do you? Blatherine! Evil clowns! Computer in the wall! Mr. Mr. Smith, I need you! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Clyde. Tell me Phoenix lies. It was just that I thought I saw some strange lights above the station and I thought Ronnie and me. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie, get him out of here. Are you sure? Phoenix? It's cool. I want to get to know Samira. And yes, Samira, I will have another banana drama. <gasps> It's a really lovely and touching reunion between Rani and Clyde. And honestly, as somebody who is the age of these characters now, having had this growing up experience of the real world since the Sarah Jane Adventures went off the air 12 years ago, blimey, does that time fly by? I massively related to the characters and found myself also having similar insecurities like Clyde is. He is very, very worried about becoming a dad. He doesn't know if he's going to become like his own dad, if he's going to mess it up or get it 
wrong. That cot that he says that he's built in that clip, it turns out he got a mate to build it. He's just really, really worried and insecure about the future, the uncertain future. Uh, and while Rani is a successful journalist, it seems to have her life together from the outside, she is also... Um, kind of messing up when it comes to the small stuff. She forgot to pay rent, so she's living on her friend's sofa. And she's also really worried about living up to the legacy of her mentor, her, her, her mother figure, Sarah Jane Smith. And this is the first time that Rani and Clyde have met since the funeral. And now they're just sort of trying to process moving along in their lives without her. And that was really, really beautifully done. And Joseph Lidster as well, friend of the live stream. He very, very kindly joined us in uh, during the 1963 charity live stream a couple of years back. And I massively appreciate his time during that. It seems like a lovely guy. He absolutely hits the nail on the head when it comes to the tone. He absolutely hits the nail on the head when it comes to these characters and also just the anxieties of growing up. Now, if you did not watch the Sarah Jen Adventures, if that was something of the Doctor Who universe that seemingly just completely passed you by, then Rani Takes on the World Beyond Bannerman Road probably is not going to work for you. In fact, I think it might actually be a bit of a safe skip because this is something for people who are invested in the the wider Doctor Who universe, primarily the Sarah Jane Adventures. It follows those characters, it has a lot of references to the Nightmare Man, to the Blatherine, as you heard in that clip, etc., etc. I think that Beyond Bannerman Road is first and foremost a sequel, a continuation to the Sarah Jane Adventures. And if you did not like the Sarah Jane Adventures, or if you did not watch the Sarah Jane Adventures, then this is not for you. However, and I've, I've seen the social media reactions since this box set dropped, this had a lot of people very, very emotional. And while, you know, I wasn't blubbering like a baby, it did not make me cry, it did really, really move me. And even if it didn't have those elements, like the returning characters and the fact that I can relate to being the same age as these characters now and they have, they have the same anxieties and worries that I do. Oh, how novel. Even if they didn't have that element here this first story here today by joseph lidster has a really brilliant standalone hook where it's a time loop essentially where rani and clyde and a unit soldier go and investigate those lights in the sky that clyde was mentioning in those clips and then the ship seemingly explodes taking all of ealing with it and then they're caught in a time loop, and then they have to try and stop that spaceship from exploding. And because they have Artron energy attached to them, because they've traveled in, in because they've traveled in time, they've been with the Doctor in the past. They are the only ones who remember the loop, and it's a really clever way to tie into the previous stories of the Sarah Jane Adventures. Now, here today also tells the story of this older woman as well, called Patricia, played by Yvonne de Alpra. And it's this lovely little side story, this story within the story that starts to make more sense as it goes along. It was really touchingly done. There's a really great performance as well from Angus Dunnigan, who plays basically the extraterrestrial threat, quote, threat. And I use that in quotes because this carries on the legacy of the Sarah Jane Adventures. They say it in the box at one point where they stop the bad aliens and they help the good aliens. And they put that front and center. This seems to be a good alien. Not everything that falls from the sky can be approached with a gun in hand. Not everything that falls from the sky needs to be fought with missiles or with unit. It needs to be faced with empathy, compassion, love, and understanding, and sometimes giving the benefit of the doubt for. So here today is like a wonderful spiritual successor to the Sarah Jane Adventures and everything that it stood for. I think even though the characters are now in their 30s, this is still a box set that I can recommend to younger audiences because it plays so much with like in the playground of the Sarah Jane Adventures when it comes to the tone, when it comes to the approach to the storytelling. Like, Torchwood, for example, is for a mature audience, is for an older audience. Sarah Jane Adventures was definitely for a younger audience. It was aimed at kids primarily, whereas Doctor Who is like a more family show. But this box set in particular just seems to hit it tonally right where it counts with that younger audience. I can imagine a 10 or a 12 year old really, really enjoying this box set if they liked the Sarah Jane Adventures. It's able to to meet those audience expectations. I think that was a really, like, really smart approach to continue the story, to grow up with the characters, but to not lose sight of where the characters came from. The second story in this set is from James Goss, Big Finish Mainstay, and it's called Destination Wedding. And this story more focuses on Rani and her mum, her queen, our icon, Gita Chandra, played by Meena Anwar. Basically, 
<laughs> so she's so good at this box set. Basically, Rani is invited to a wedding on a luxury island. We've got Tiff, played by Rachel Fenwick, who has invited Rani to this wedding, and she's basically marrying a movie star. And a bunch of Hollywood A-listers and celebrities are also being brought to this luxury island. We've got a receptionist, played by Will Bishop, who is helping to ensure that everything in this wedding goes smoothly. However, people are going missing. Strange things are happening. The bread is going moldy very, very very quickly what's going on well rani is here to investigate here's a clip from destination wedding lovely evening miss chandra oh i didn't see me don't worry about it people often don't notice the receptionist it's so quiet no one about isn't that odd where is everyone miss chandra oh nothing i was expecting well weddings can be a bit wild Oh, yes, indeed they can be, but not here. We make the best of people. And, well, we're more select. I know. Isn't that... I mean, all those celebrities, aren't they crazy demanding? People are all the same to me. Sure. And the sacrifices are worth it. To live here, with that view. Oh, yes. I'm very lucky. Yeah, I'd never get bored of that sunset. No. Life is never easy, but it's all about what you make of it. Yeah, I feel so rested here. I'm pleased to hear it. Things have been a lot, and this is oh, just a moment of absolute peace. There you are. Do you know she abandoned me on a cliff? My careless daughter. I could have... Well, I could have fallen to my death. Mum. Oh, and now she's rolling her eyes. At her mother. Making my way back here in the dark. The path's lit. All the same. Anything could have happened. I won't sleep a wink. Perhaps you'd be interested in looking at the Juniper Terrace. We've laid out a little midnight feast of herbal teas and fruits. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Very soothing. Lead the way. Thank you. My pleasure. Destination Wedding is a really interesting middle chapter for this box set because firstly it does isolate Rani from her support network with the exception of her mother in order to get her into this basically this strange wedding scenario where you know this acquaintance from school who does not even like Rani has invited her to this um, to this occasion and there's a bunch of Hollywood stars around there's a lot of references and jokes that I, I think James Goss maybe slightly leans a bit too heavily on that part of the humor like oh George Clooney is going to be giving a speech oh there's Brad Pitt over there oh there's there's Ben Affleck oh there's Dame Judi Dench oh there's there's Dame Maggie Tiff is like oh no Dame Maggie's my friend not a not my my superstar movie star husband's friend which you know that was a bit of a funny twist on it but uh, I think that they rely a little bit too much on that that being said though compare like here today which is this big epic time loop story which uh, repeats over and over and over again at a really good pace but destination wedding takes it a little bit more slower it's a bit more mellow and relaxed as they're isolated on this island waiting for the big wedding day to occur and things are slowly going wrong over the course of several days as these strange mysteries start piling up it was really good to have these releases kind of complement each other when I was talking about the Fifth Doctor Adventures box set, Conflicts of Interest, you had two stories side by side that were very thematically similar and also very structurally similar, which, you know, sometimes that can really work for people. But for me, I like big finish releases where the releases, they can complement each other, but they're structurally different. They play with tone a lot more. They mess around with the supporting characters a lot more. And this box set for me ticked those boxes where Destination Wedding is so very different from here today and also the third one the witching tree by lizzie hopley but we'll talk about that in a minute i think that destination wedding was a solid middle chapter i thought the performances across the board were really really strong i thought you, you heard in the clip there will bishop as the receptionist did such a really good job without getting into spoilers i really liked what the box set was going for in terms of like how you hold on to these resentments how you hold on to these negative aspects and these negative people in your life and you sort of carry that spite into your adult years despite 
everything else kind of being pretty inconsequential, like when you actually think about it. I thought it was really, really clever how you have a character like Tiff who has invited people to her wedding that she doesn't even like. Why has she done it? To what end? What extraterrestrial stuff is happening on this island resort? I can't tell you. That's all spoiler stuff, but I think it had a lot on its mind. I think Destination Wedding was really clever. I had a lot to say about you know, the human condition, as preachy and as as, uh, as pretentious as that sounds. But I think it was really, really cleverly and smartly done. It was very intellectually um, and emotionally intelligent how, you know, as you grow older and you drag these negative elements of your past with you. And in a way, it's good to do that because it defines you. It, it uh, makes you you know, people are made of the good and the bad things, and sometimes you learn from those bad experiences, and you don't want to let them overwhelm you, on the other hand. I thought it was really clever. I th I can imagine a lot of people listening to this box set and Destination Wedding is the story that really, really sticks with them. I think, for me, it was like the, the weaker middle chapter, but the fact that this was the weakest story of the box set kind of shows just how strong, overall, a box set this was. I'm not saying this to try and drag down Destination Wedding. It was still really really good and thirdly the final installment in Riley takes on the world beyond Bannerman Road is The Witching Tree by Lizzie Hopley and this is what I'm talking about when I say that I love it when these box sets play with the structure and play with the tone they're not just back-to-back -back retreads of the same story or of the same template The Witching Tree is is partially formatted like an episode of Rani Chandran's podcast, Rani Takes on the World. That's you know that that's the that's where the, the box set gets its title from. Where she's doing an expose, a paranormal or alien investigation on this haunted witching tree which has sprung up over the past couple of years by this restaurant. And they have no idea where it's come from, they have no idea what it's doing, but it does seem to be spooky, it does seem to be haunted. And you get a lot of influences I think here from something like Black Mirror or The Twilight Zone. And I love the way how it intersperses the actual podcast itself with the conventional three-act structure that you'd expect from an audio drama like this. Let's play a clip from The Witching Tree, where you hear Rani interacting with Samira, who is her friend and her editor, played by Raghad Cha, and there's a lot of creepy stuff going on. Let's play a clip from The Witching Tree. Just to explain to the listener, I'm still in Farnham, and Samira's editing everything I send back, and so far, she's not impressed. Uh, I said I like the witch's thing, and the devil thing is good. The fact that it's a policeman's thing. PCSO, except I can't find that story online. The customer making offerings? They could be to the devil, if what the copper says is true. And the tree is an incarnation of the devil. We need something more substantial to silence critics like Mike Guessing from Stockport. Rani! You can't! What? <sighs> I've paused the recording. What? Why? Rani, you can't target individual listeners like that. Oh, so I fuel a few trolls. How many coffees you had? Eh? You sound a bit hyper. I'm trying to inject some energy into this stuff. Samira, I'm investigating a haunted tree in Poddy Award Week. Ah, not the best lead you've had. But you know my thoughts on that. I'm not revealing my source. They're a secret for a reason. Gonna be hard to get a week out of this. I need more Sheila Ward, but she's gone quiet. I need the waitress she hired, Pippa. And you need to explain that numbers list. Because I am not broadcasting that. Numbers list? After you touched the tree, I had to cut it out. What list? There was a whole load of it. Before the Vox Pops with the lads in the coffee shop. I'll play it, hang on. Our raw arc 22713. Not your best work. Bit monotonous. Two, two, seven, I thought one, it was some four, kind of time code. Seven, no, you don't understand that. I don't remember seven, recording one, that. Five, it's definitely seven, you. I mean, arc. it's not the only two, weird file two, you uploaded. Seven, what? You are really not with it today. Where have you been staying? Staying? I got here this morning. Rani, it's Monday. What? You've been in Farnham since Saturday. I think there's some really cool moments like that when you're sort of learning about these twists and these creepy supernatural things at the same time that Rani does. I think it's really cleverly structured. And there's a really great moment where Anjali Mahindra completely changes her performance vocally when she has a go at like the pub landlord 
who is like at the center of this witching tree issue, this witching tree supernatural event. And the way how she completely changes the way that she talks, you can like immediately tell that something supernatural is going on here without the actual script, the text having to exposit about that and be like, oh, Ryan is completely changed. Like, you, know, you just kind of feel it. You can just kind of tell. That was really cool. Now, I will say there's one twist in the witching tree revolving around the return of Clyde and his and his partner, the mother of his as yet unborn child, Phoenix, played by Tegan Byrne. There's a twist revolving that that I'm, I, you know, in principle, I'm OK with the twist and the directions that it takes. But I really, really hope that it's built upon in future box sets. We know that Rani Takes on the World is getting a second box set coming out in the near future. So this comes out in December. Rani Takes on the World, The Revenge of Wormwood. And Daniel Anthony is confirmed to be returning in this. So I really, really hope that what we learn in The Witching Tree is built upon. We learn how it affects him. We learn how he deals with that. I hope it's not just a, hmm, that was a thing that happened and then we completely forget about it but Alex Wynn composed in the chat I really hope we get a Rani and Redacted crossover Rani and Cleo were so much fun in Redacted to get them in a full story together would be a blast there's actually a reference in the witching tree to the blue box files uh, so that's that's like a bit of a Redacted crossover little little thing there which I thought was really really clever and nicely seamlessly done I appreciated that reference a lot but the witching tree, I love how it plays with structure. I think it's genuinely quite quite creepy and unsettling at points. It's got a great premise. It was really cool to sort of hear the director's cut of an episode of Rani Takes on the World and also hear like the making of the episode of it. Cleverly done, cleverly put together. Lizzie Hopley is a writer who absolutely knows what she's doing. And I think all three writers were great choices for this release. Joseph Lidster just knocks it out of the park with the first one, really has a great handle on the tone and the characters. James Goss has a lot of fun in Destination Wedding and it's a great compliment to him today where you've got this fast-paced time loop story complementing this much more slow and lackadaisical wedding resort story and the witching tree which is like a director's cut slash making of rani takes on the world with some really great performances under underpinning it really great cool horror set pieces this was a really really good box set like i said if you don't have any attachment to the sarah jane adventures if you didn't watch it if you don't care for it i think this is a safe skip but if you are after a continuation of that story, you want to know what these characters have been up to, what they're doing now that they're approaching 30, this is a must-listen box set. I thought it was really strong all the way through, and I really look forward to knowing what happens next. So the next box set comes out in December. Like I said, it's been confirmed that Samantha Bond is returning as Mrs. Wormwood. Tommy Knight is also confirmed in the cast list to be playing Luke Smith as well. So the whole gang is back together. So this comes out in December. But this was a really strong start to this, basically, the Sarah Jane Adventures Part 2, the Sarah Jane Adventures Volume 2. And there's a lot of great emotional moments as well, particularly with Rani trying to live up to the expectations of Sarah Jane Smith. Or I, I don't even think Sarah Jane would have expectations for Rani. I think they would just want Rani to be happy and that they'd want Rani to do the best that she can in a broken, corrupt world. And that Rani is imposing those... Um, I think Rani is sort of like projecting the insecurity on herself. It's a really interesting approach to take for the character. And I'm interested in knowing if they sort of develop the potential romance between Rani and Clyde moving forward. But of course, spoilers later on.